Algebra 1, 11.1c, approximating irrational numbers. We can use a rational number to help us approximate an irrational number. Many algebra textbooks have a table of squares and square roots in the appendix in the back of the book. And you can even find them online. I found this one. And if you look, there's three columns. And because the paper wasn't long enough, the column continued on this side. But if you look really close, there's the first column that just has numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. See how it just keeps going? And it shows the square. The square of 1 is 1. The square of 4 is 2. See that? And the third column is for the first column. So you could say the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 6 is approximately 2.449. See that? So it doesn't say that the square root of 9 is 1.732. That's not how it works. This square is 3. It's 3 times 3. But if you want to get the square root of 3, then you jump to this column. Okay? I know it sounds confusing, but I'll show you. All right? If a square isn't listed in the table, then it's not a perfect square. So let's look at this center column here. What would be the square root of 12? Well, it's not listed here, is it? It's in between the 9 and the 16. And the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 12 is somewhere between a 3 and a 4. All right? We could also go down the first column here to the 12 and see that the square root is approximately 3.464. See? Just like we thought, it's in between a 3 and a 4. It's 3.464, and that's only an approximation, all right? So because 12 isn't listed in that middle column, the square root of 12 isn't a perfect square. It's not in this middle column. It's not a perfect square. All the middle column ones are perfect squares. Because the square root of 12 isn't a perfect square, it was in between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, and the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is a 4. So our answer for the square root of 12 is somewhere between a 3 and a 4. And we can use an approximate symbol, the two wavy lines, that, and put 3.5 because it's in between 3 and 4. So we say 3 and a half, right? And if we look at the numbers in the first column and their square roots in the third column, we see the square root of 12 is approximately 3.464. All right. So what I did was I looked in the middle column in my table. I didn't see a 12 here. So I figured it was the answer is in between a 3 and a 4. And by using the first column, this is the other way of doing it, you just go down to the 12 and skip to the third column to see that it's 3.464. Let's try it with a different number. I don't see any perfect squares here for the number 6. So what would be the square root of 6? Well, it's in between a 4 and a 9, isn't it? So it's going to be in between a 2 and a 3. So we could say it's probably about a 2 and a half or so. Then we can go down here to the number 6 and skip over to the third column and look. It's approximately 2.449. So we were close at about 2 and a half, weren't we? But remember, you have to use the approximate symbol if it's not a perfect square. All right? So when we look at these perfect squares, the square root of 0 is 0, because 0 times 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. See? Square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. So we can use these perfect squares to approximate, to estimate the square root of an irrational number. So the square root of 2 is in between here, isn't it? So that means the answer is in between a 1 and a 2. So we could say the square root of 2 is around approximately 1 and a half. Do you see the square root of 21? Well, that would be in between the 16 and the 25, wouldn't it? This square root of 21 is in between these two. So the answer is going to be in between 4 and 5. So we could say it's approximately 4 and a half. See? How about the square root of 53? Well. Here's the square root of 49, and here's 64, so it's going to be somewhere in the middle here. So we can say it's approximately 7 and a half, couldn't we? And the square root of 78 is somewhere in between these two perfect squares. 
64 and 81, so the answer is going to be somewhere around 8.5. See? We could also go back to our table and look for 21 on the table. I figured it was around 4.5 approximately. We can go to this first column and look for the number 21. And look, its square root is approximately 4.583. So using the table, we were even around 4.5. See? What about the square root of 53? We figured it was approximately 7.5 because it's in between these two. So let's look for the square root of 53 in the table. Oh, well, it doesn't go up that high. But the square root of 50 is 7.071. See? So there are square root tables that go up to 100 that you can find online, and the one in your book might even go to 100, okay? I know the one in the back of my Prentice Hall book goes to 100, all right? So that's how you can approximate them using perfect squares, but remember, you have to use that approximation symbol because it's not an equal, all right? Equal means exact. We can also use a calculator to help us find approximations for square roots. So if you have a scientific calculator, and most calculators have a square root key or button. See, this is right here on whatever brand that is. And they're all different, so that all the buttons are in different places, aren't they? Did you know that even cell phones come with a basic calculator app that can be turned landscape to show the square root key? When you've got your cell phone upright like this, it might just show a real basic calculator with the nine buttons and the zero and a plus and a minus. But when you turn your cell phone's landscape like this, a scientific calculator might show up that has the square root button, all right? And to find the square root of eight with the cell phone calculator app, you just hit square root eight and equals. And then you'll see something like this come up this long decimal as the answer. And my cell phone goes to 10 di digits to the right of this decimal point. This is what I got when I did it. But this is actually an approximation because calculators turn irrational numbers into terminating decimals when they're actually not terminating. My cell phone just didn't want to go any more than 10 digits. It would have kept going and going and going for the square root of 8. See? So don't get fooled into thinking that that's an exact answer, all right? It's only a, an approximation, so we'd have to use that approximate symbol, right? Now, for some scientific calculators, you might have to put in the number first and then hit that square root key. So for my phone, I hit square root, then 8, then equals, but there's some calculators that you have to put in 8, then hit the square root key, and then equals. It might even just look like a check mark, like that, okay? And some calculators have an INV key. That means inverse. Or it might say second for a key with a little X with a power of 2, like that, on a key. And you can just do the square root of 8 or... You can put in 8 and then hit the second button key and then the x squared button and you'll get this, which if you look at what I got on my cell phone, on the app on my cell phone, see how I kept going to 247 after that 1, but on a scientific calculator it stopped here after the 1. So it's still an approximation. The square root of 8 is approximately 2.83 because what I did was I said 2.83 because this 8 to told the 2 to round up to a 3. See? So it's an approximation. It really continues on, doesn't it? All right? So our next video is going to be 11.1D, and we're going to talk about the rational approximations of pi of 3.14. And if you want to know about the previous video where we talked about rational versus irrational numbers, or if you want to link to the first chapter of my grade 8 math playlist that talks all about rational and irrational numbers or any of the other previous videos that might help you, there's links in the description of this video. Okay? All right. Let's go talk about pi. All right? I hope you're okay. I'll see you next video. Bye.